Now, after 10 years touring the world, the acclaimed beatboxer SK Shlomo realised that they were getting sick but were too scared to tell anyone. They became isolated and eventually suicidal. But they survived. Now, in aid of a suicide charity, they are back with Breathe, a project to help tackle suicide, which recreates the impromptu rave in their living room that not only saved their life, but transformed a sleepy village community. Here's just a sneak peek. What if the music could bring people together on a night that would change my life forever? I decided to throw the greatest rave of all time in my living room, baby. Turns out we all feel broken sometimes. And now I need your help to tell this story, our story, for anyone who's ever felt too alone. Reach for the lasers. Uh, very pleased to say that Slow is in the studio with me. Slow, lovely to meet you. Um, How you doing? You know, well, you know, I'm doing very well. But, you know, I am someone who knows everything about beatboxing, having been <laughs> a fan of Razel back in the day, been immersed in the hip-hop culture for many years. West Coast of Scotland, guys. Um, <laughs> for those who it. aren't as au fait with it, just explain mm -hmm. what beatboxing is and wh wh where it emerged from. So beatboxing is when you make music with your mouth... <laughs> mouth... <laughs> That um, and it, emerged, <laughs> it emerged from the streets of New York in the early 80s as hip hop was being born, and then, like my kind of generation, approached it. You know, I started doing it as a kid as a way to practice drums. I wasn't allowed to play my drums because the neighbors complained, so I started <laughs> just, like, just for me. It's, Pretty much just an ADHD symptom, to be honest with you, but then but, 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 somehow it became a career. Well, it, well, I mean, in 10 years <laughs> of a career as well, let's be clear, playing some huge <laughs> venues. But, but just in terms of the, the physics of it, the practicalities of it, yeah. how? How is it possible to do multiple noises with one mouth? I mean, I've got several presenter colleagues who'd really like to know. <laughs> uh, well, it's... It's, it's, it's the same as any other, like, discipline, I guess. It's just about practice. The sounds that you're making are really simple sounds, the same kind of stuff that you use for speech, just... <laughs> Maybe a couple of them aren't the ones you use in speech, but I guess it's just about, like, it's rhythm, it's music, it's articulation, it's expression. It's super empowering in that way because you can do it anywhere you like, in any space you want, and once you start getting it on the microphone with a big, badass sound system, you can make an entire room full of people jump up and down using just, just the power of your voice. It feels so good. And the, and the, and the difference, when I mean, you talked about the early 80s when this all emerged, to, between then and now, is you've now got the ability to sample yourself and layer and create even more challenging soundscapes than ever before. Oh, it's so much fun. Like, yeah, I kind of... First I got into the beatboxing, mm -hmm. then I started doing that on stage, um, and then I got into, like, live looping, where you can kind of layer your voice up in real time. And then I became, like... Quite early in my career, I became like world looping champion. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, and that meant that I kind of had... People were like sending me all these different bits of gear to play with. And I was like, this can just get more and more powerful. And this show that, that we're opening now is like the deepest I've ever gone in kind of immersing my voice and my story with the technology. It's so fun. I, I was going to say, I mean, uh, certainly you've expanded what you can do with the technology, but going deep into your, to, into your own personal story, tell, tell us just mm. a little bit about the show, starting at the Halbert Hall tonight. And, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it is quite reflective. It is. It goes, goes straight to the heart of your, your, your own personal story. Tell yeah, us. yeah. There's, like, a real depth to the story because it tells a true story of how I was in a really, really dark place and, you know, really at, at risk of suicide mm. and um, how I ended up having to open up to the people around me. I'd completely isolated myself. I, I wouldn't connect, I wouldn't speak, I wouldn't tell anyone. It's this typical, like, toxic male thing where you don't feel like you're allowed to have feelings um and you know this show really goes deep on that and it tells the story of how as i gradually learned to trust other people and and open up a little bit i needed them to come and hold me and for me the way i need to be held is by jumping up and down on a dance floor like i'm a raver i always have been uh, and all these people around me who who i thought weren't who i thought were different to me who i thought would judge me uh, it turns out that we're all ravers, really. And that's what the show really does. It, 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 it explores, like, what is rave? Is it really about warehouses and drugs? Or is it about people coming together, holding each other, and just, like, being free, being wild? 
It's basically, we used to call it peace, love, unity. That's what it was back in the day. <laughs> exactly. But, but just in terms of, of kind of your, your own experience, I mean, it's all about kind of a raising awareness of suicide. We, mm. we do seem to be more able to talk about it these days, but that doesn't mean, of course, that it doesn't happen. I, not that long ago, lost a friend uh, oh, in so those sorry. circumstances, and it, mm. and it leaves such a hole. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. And, you know, that's why I've really wanted to do this project to support Calm, which is an incredible helpline. They save lives every single night. And I've been doing quite a lot of work with them, like, throughout the lockdown. We started having these, like, online raves, and they kind of went crazy. We were on, we were on Sky News talking about that as well, which was yeah. so gorgeous. We have people all around the world just, like, raving from home, and we raised a lot of money for Calm. Um, and then with this show, like, I just thought, you know what? I really want to do a show that starts off like a seated piece of theatre so I can tell the story and really get emotional. And I want it to end with everyone partying and jumping and, and celebrating being alive. And I'm thinking the only way I can make that work is by just being honest about my story. Like, I can't speak for anyone else. We've all got our own different version of feeling broken or feeling alone or feeling like we're not enough. Um, but I can only tell mine and hope that it relates to other people. And I'm just so excited. We've been working on this for so long and it opens tonight and I'm just, yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> well, literally, wishing you all the very best with it. Albert Hall, then Albert Hall, you're then, off to Edinburgh. Yeah, full season at Edinburgh Fringe and then I'm on tour with it. And yeah, we're all going to be raving. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, crack on. All the very best with it, It's been a pleasure meeting you. Really appreciate it. Take care. And if you've been affected by any, of course, of their issues uh, raised in our interview with Shlo, you can contact, obviously, the Samaritans, their number, 116123, or you can email joe, J-O, at samaritans.org.